CA final ACMP self paced papers. We are doing MCQs of standard costing. We are going to be doing every MCQ that is going to be possible. Okay, so let's do this. Now, sometimes you'll realize actually ICA makes some like some very stupid MCQs, absolutely disgrace of the English language. This is one among them that you will see over here. Okay, so let's do this one. A newly appointed manager of HR department is interested in knowing. Interested to know which of the following is not responsible for labor rate variance. I understood this. There is no problem over here. So which is not responsible for labor rate variance? Okay, which of the following reasons? Fine. Bring out the four options. A. Unexpected increase in pay rate of the labor. B over here. B will be level of experience of the labor can impact direct labor cost. Why they had to be writing can impact direct labor cost. The question is not that beta. The question is which reason is not applicable for labor rate variance. Okay. Why they have to be writing these sentences. Can't help it off. That is the stupidity of the institute. C. Poor supervision of the workforce. Okay. D. Again. Change in composition of the workforce can impact direct labor cost. Now, how do you compute labor rate variance? Let's try to talk of that beta. Standard rate minus actual rate into actual hours. Okay. To be very specific, actual hours paid for, not actual hours worked. So basically rate variance comes because standard rate is not equal to actual rate. Okay. And we have to be finding out which of the following cannot be a reason. Okay. So A. Unexpected increase in pay rate of the uh, of the labor. Obviously, we increase their rate. Labor rate variance will become adverse. So, therefore, that is a reason, in fact, for labor rate variance. So, A cannot be the answer. Poor supervision of the workers. To be very honest, if you will not supervise the workers, no, they will work inefficiently. If they will work inefficiently, their efficiency variance will become adverse. So, I think C is not a reason for labor rate variance. But let's continue for this B. Level of experience of labor can impact direct labor cost. They should not have written this word only. But see, what I'm trying to be saying, if suppose some workers were employed first, later on we realize that they have great level of experience. We'll have to pay them higher rates. This is whatever I say should have written as such. Okay. They should not have written these words. Can impact the direct labor cost. But in any case, I have to try to be solving and that's what I'm trying to be doing. So if you ever employ more high skilled workers, sometimes those guys will start to be asking, sir, give us a higher rate. So as compared to the other workers. So therefore your actual rate will rise. Huh? So labor rate variance can become adverse. So therefore this can be a reason for labor rate variance. Let's look at D. Change in the composition of the workforce can impact direct labor cost. Again, why the hell can impact direct labor cost? The question is what, which one of them is not responsible for labor rate variance. Okay. In any case, D. If somebody is there in board of studies, please tell them to improve their level of English. It's really horrible. Now, change in the composition of workforce. If you employ more skilled workers, those guys in end, you will have to pay higher only. Okay. So therefore, if you employ more skilled workers or the vice versa, if you employ more dumb workers, then you will pay them less as compared to the standard rate. So your rate variance might also get affected. So out of A, B, C, D, I think definitely C cannot be a reason for labor rate variance. So if you would have thought of the answers, then answer in this case should have been C. That should be the correct answer. That's the correct answer.